Hello guys, welcome to ZTV Presence Tech View, another episode. Uh, today I'll show you guys how you can install SQL Server instance in a Windows Server. And so for today's tutorial, I chose Windows Operating System 2019 and also SQL Server 2019. So thank you, thanks for watching this video. And if you're new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And also if you like this video, end of the video, if you like it, please give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to click the bell icon. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and I'll show you my environment. So, all right, so let's move this one window. Okay. So this is my environment actually. Uh, I have two SQL box here and you, you, you if you can look at here, I have total uh, two node, which is a SQL Allison node I have here. Um, and also I have a Windows box and I name it a SQL, but I didn't install the SQL server yet on these two nodes because I have a plan and I will make another video to create SQL server always on high availability. I have already with two nodes, so I'm gonna make the other two nodes and I'll show you guys in another video how you can add how you can add these two like uh, instance with the existing uh, sql all as an environment that's what i'm going to show you but these two boxes yeah, like it says just windows installation is done and also failover cluster feature is installed and i i'm going to show you actually uh, how to install um sql instance so that's like in this video's topic so make sure you everything is ready. You have a Windows Server box like this, the one I have here. And if you look at what I have, so for SQL installation, at least you should have two drive minimum, minimum, or you can have multiple drives. It depends, but I never suggest you to install SQL Server um, in a C drive because C drive is engine. You never do that. So you can have multiple uh, drives, like four or five drives, one drives database, uh, MDF for MDF file, for log file, diff separate uh, uh, drive for backup, separate drive, like that. But in here, I use only three drive. One is C drive, it's just for uh, Windows. And these two drive, I'm gonna use for one for database, one for backup. It's up to you, up to, based on your uh, environment requirement, but I'll show you with the three drive in a Windows machine, right? So if you want to know how to install the operating system and also how, um, uh, what is called, how to add a drive, more drive. I have all those videos in my channel. Uh, um, uh, if you uh, like search my other video, you will get it. And so let's get started. I have the ISO file here. Uh, you see, I already copied to my, this folder. Uh, it's ISO file 2019. And also I have a SSMS, which is uh, SQL Server Management Studio in um, 19.1 version. So, and now I'm going to install the SQL Server. So for installing SQL Server, what do you need? You need some .NET framework version, uh, which is you need to check from here, but you can, ahead of time you can install it or ahead of time you can install it or the, the, the time you are running, uh, the SQL Server um, installation process will do for you. So it's not an issue, but only one thing you need to make sure on the server, the Windows box you are running, make sure you have um, proper computer name, the server is uh, added with the domain. Um, see my server name is dv01 is ls.com. That means it's already a part of domain. And also turn off the firewall, make sure firewall is off. Um, and uh, and also you have an IP address like the way I configure here IP you see. So because without this configuration you cannot add the machine with the domain. You see here I have a configuration. So everything you need to be done ahead of time uh, because right now I'm just showing you only how to install it, right? How to install a SQL instance. So just keep in your mind um, SQL Server instance uh, and the price level, one instance should be in one Windows Server box. But if you want, you can have multiple. 
if you want, you can have multiple of uh, instance in one Windows box. That's not an issue, but you can have it. But nobody do it because of performance. So if they need 50 uh, SQL Server instance, they, they, they use 50 SQL boxes, just for an example. But if you want, you can do it. You can increase maybe memory or RAM, uh, CPU, then you can maybe do it. But the only thing I want to mention here, let's start it, run it, mount it. This is the ISO file. So when you mount it, it's going to show you like this window. It's automatically open. It's going to mount at a DVD drive, but it's not actual DVD drive. It's mounting as a DVD drive for temporary. Okay. So double click or right click on the, the setup, the setup icon, run click, right click and say run as an administrator and click yes. And then wait a little bit, minimize this one. Then after a couple of seconds or minutes is going to be show you here it's this is skin so you have to give a little bit time okay it says please wait so remember my computer name is ELS SQL DV01 right then this is the first instance I'm installing here and before you install any instance or anything uh, if you want you can take a snapshot if it is a virtual machine if you have a um, access, you can take backup by yourself or maybe, sorry, um, snapshot by yourself, or maybe you can open a ticket request to your uh, system admin team or infrastructure team uh, to take the sna uh, snapshot. Because if something goes wrong, <clears throat> after that, you'll, you'll be able to revert back. So you're going to take like this, right click, snapshot, take a snapshot and uh, turn off this one. And then maybe you can have say before SQL installation. Or something like that, okay? So that means like you will be in a um, safe zone. Like if, if something goes wrong, you can revert back, all right. Anyway, that's uh, actually virtual machine side work and this is the instance, okay? This inst instance installation. So the window is already open. Just, I, I just make it big to, for, for like easy viewing. Um, Installation, you have to go to the planning gonna be highlighted, but you have to go to the second option, which is installation, click installation. And then on the right side, you're gonna see new SQL server standalone installation and add feature to the existing installation. So the first one, click the first one, then on the background is running another thing. So you don't need this screen anymore. You can close it or you can minimize it. So I'm going to close it. Okay, now it shows what? What it shows? Uh, specify a free edition or enterprise. So if you have a key, like if you work for a company, obviously they will have a key, you can provide the key. But for, in my case, I don't have that key. So it's, uh, it's a evolution version and um, Microsoft SQL Server evolution version works for six months. Any kind of Microsoft product is for six months. So click next, you have uh, enough time and you can accept it, click next. And then Show, show details, you can check if everything is passed and don't do the update right now. Later on, you can update it. So just leave it like that, click next. And this, is, and this screen will take a little bit time. Just you have to be wait until it's finished. All right, so now it's showing the feature selection, right? So SQL Server is instance installation feature. It has instance feature and also it has a share feature. So two features you have to install. So you see here, everything, nothing is installed on this box previously. That's why everything is like unchecked here. So now it's your turn, but one thing remember, the very first time, because on this box, this is a very brand new server. In this server, previously, nobody installed any SQL server, right? So that's why you are the first time, you, you, you are installing first time. 
So that's why you have to ins ins uh, install instance feature and also um, share feature. So share feature can be installed in one server one time. What does it mean? So if you select, okay, on, from the share feature side, I want uh, client tools, connectivity, I want um, integration service, if you want, so you can do that, or client SDK backward, or maybe you want SQL client connectivity SDK. That's it, you don't need that much, okay? So four uh, features we selected. That means these four features will be installed um, one time. So if you want second instance on this computer and that time you don't need to install share feature. You just need to install only the instance feature, which is database engine. So you should just select this one if for the second instance. So that's why I say, like how many instances you can install in one box? If you install 10 instances, 10 times you have to install instance feature, a database engine service. But nine times, you don't need to install share features, just only one time. So out of 10, only one time you need to install share features and another nine times you don't need to do anything on the share feature. If you want 10 instances in one machine, just an example, okay? So what do we need to select for the instance, under the instance features, database engine, basic, the basic things, database engine and full text, you can do it, or maybe you don't, it's, it's completely okay. And then um, SQL Server application, you don't need machine, okay, you don't need. Uh, analysis service, it depends on you. If you want, so you can install it. Uh, and if you don't want, you don't need to. And if, if you need it later on, you can add it later on. Okay, anyway. So now you see here instance root directory, share feature directory, share feature directory. Everything is going C drive, but I don't want anything to go my C drive because C drive is in Gene. So I have what drive? I have a D drive here, right? So I gonna push everything to D drive. I, what I need to do, I just need to select the C and type the D. That's it. Instead of C, just remove the C and type D. Shift D, that's what I'm doing. And D, that's it and click next okay anyway because this machine actually we installed several times it's showing the uh, issues anyway you don't need to but you can, what you can do you can just uh, or you can have a folder like this, you can have a folder copy. So let me SQL Server, SQL Server, and this is SQL Server, right? Program files, program files. And so you can have here a folder, new folder. program files, right? It should, it should come automatically. Oh, sorry, sorry. You see here, actually you don't need to open it. It's my mistake. Uh, actually, I didn't focus on it. It's actually not D, it's E drive. It's E drive, you see here? It's E drive, it's my mistake. Okay, anyway, go back, say E drive. E drive and E drive. E, okay, now you do next. You see, now it's going to be automatically created this folder inside here. It's going to create folder here. Within short time, you're going to see you will have a folder here. Anyway, so come back here. Okay, so now instance configuration, okay. Um, named instance. So first time when you install an instance is gonna be a, is gonna be um, name instance. Like if you install first time. So in this box, we never install. That means 
you, you have two options. You can do the default instance or you can do name instance. So default, actually default instance is the first time. So first time, whenever you install first time in one Windows box, in that case, you have two choice, either default instance or name instance. Name instance means you will be able to provide a name. That's called name instance. So if you click named, then you'll be able to change it. Whatever you want, you can type it, right? But if you say, no, I want default instance. Default instance means it's gonna give a default name, which is MS SQL Server. That's the default name. And how are you gonna access this instance? So when you try to access the instance in that time, your instance name will be actually by default your machine name. So what is your machine name? Your machine name, that means Windows machine, Windows server name. So your Windows server name will be the your SQL Server instance. Because whenever you type your Windows Server machine name, automatically it's gonna redirect to, automatically it's gonna redirect to where? Here, your MS SQL Server. So most of the people like, it depends. If you want, you can have a named instance, but named instance, if you use the name instance in that case, in that case, one thing you have to focus on, which is the SQL um, Server port the port will be changed. What is the port, SQL Server port? I, I'll show you here. Name five TCP, okay. And the TCP IP, if you see 1433 is a default port because we are using MS SQL Server uh, uh, default instance, that's why. So default instance SQL Server port is um one four three three but if you install um naming instance name instance then this port will be changed so you have to remember so now we are going with the default instance which is by default this one but if you want to install second instance in this machine or third instance in the machine there is no alternative you have to go for name instance you have to provide the name okay click next A little bit time. So installation is pretty simple and easy. It's not that hard, but you have to understand actually what you are doing. So now SQL Server Agent, SQL Server Database Engine. You can do it with anti-service. That's not a problem, but I will recommend all the time, if you are working for a company, you should use a service account. And also that box, you should log in as a service account. I logged in in this Windows machine with the service account, which is SQL admin, you see here. And also I'm gonna verify all in the installation process, I'm gonna verify all these services with SQL service account. And also, if you have a plan to add these two or this in the stand or uh, to uh, with your um, existing uh, always an environment or maybe you have a plan to create you are the reason you are installing this instance because you have a plan to create a always an environment in that case the service account is mandatory service account is mandatory so you have to have a service account anyway you should do all the time with the service account so click here and browse then type here SQL admin and check you see a SQL admin service account okay and okay then same thing here sql admin check selected already okay and okay right so this one is a manual make it automatic this is also automatic and provide the password Okay. Whatever the whatever is your password, and SQL Server browser is by default is disabled. Make sure it's you know, you can do it manual or automatic. Whatever you want, you do it. Just do it. And this one you cannot be able to change it. And then click next. Now 
Windows authentication mode and mixed mode. What does it mean? Windows authentication mode means now I log in this machine with SQL admin and also if I add add current user, it's gonna add me SQL admin here, see, automatically. And also I will have options to add more. So if you say SQL, SQL ADMIN, maybe I'm gonna add as a group. So SQL admin group. So if I add a SQL admin group, that means whoever is belongs to this group, they will have admin privilege Windows authentication mode like they will have a Windows authentication mode, privilege access, all those users, whoever is belongs to this group. What, that's what it mean. But we don't gonna just leave like that. We also we're gonna do mixed mode. Mixed mode means not only the Windows authentication or Active Directory authentication, we want also the SQL authentication, SQL native authentication. So uh, when you say mixed mode, that means SQL server authentication and Windows authentication. So SQL server authentication means Locally inside the SQL instance, there is a by default user which is called SA. User name is SA, that means service account basically. So it's a local, it's a local SA is a user name SA. And so you're gonna provide that as a password. So it's up to you what kind of password you're gonna provide, but you have to remember it's a local, okay. But I try to use all the time same password. And then data collections. Now here's a little bit difference. Data collect. Uh, sorry, data directories. Okay, data directory is going to E drive. That's fine. System database directory is going to E drive. That's also fine. So, but in your case, maybe if you want in a different fold of a drive, so you can just provide the drive later. That's it. So if you have a multiple drive, F, G, H, K, whatever, just change the drive. That's it. User database directory is going e drive. In my case, is okay. User database lock directory is going e drive. Is uh, my in my case is okay. But if you have a different directory, just change the directory name. If you have a dedicated uh, directory, that means e drive. I'm talking about the drive, like this one. Uh, I'm talking about drive. If you have a different separate drive for log file and everything, so you can just uh, just type the drive later. That's it. So I have only arrangement for backups in a separate drive. So what is the drive, what is my drive? Uh, let's see, for the backup it's F drive, okay? So I'm just going to change only this one. So it's up to you, it's up to you, it's not mandatory. So I'm gonna change the letter, it's um, F drive, okay. And then Temp DB. So temp DB, I'm not changing anything. It's by default, it's going to E drive, that's fine. But if you want, if you have a different drive, so you can maybe type for temp DB, okay, maybe HKJ, whatever the drive. That's it, click next. And now everything is done, just say install. That's it. Now it's installing, after installation is done, then So it's gonna take a little bit time. So I'm going to pause the video and whenever it's done, I will come back and I'll show you finally it's done. All right, so it shows it's done, right? So then just close it. Close it and then you can check SQL Server. We cannot browse it here because we don't have SSMS, but I can browse this one through other. If you have any SSMS install, any any machine in your environment, from there net, through the network, you can access this instance. So I'm just trying to check actually all the services running or not. See, these are running with the SQL admin. This, if, if this service is not running, MSQL, this is not running. If it is stopped, then you cannot access it. But now I'll be able to access it. How? This is, the instance name is MS SQL Server, but if I want to access it from other machine, how I gonna access it? In that time, I have to use the server name, which is this one, the machine name. So I'm going to just copy this machine name from here. Okay, and I have another machine where the SQL SSMS is already running. I just need to connect. So if you look, do like this, for this name and then Windows application is already, this one is assigned, see, it's connected. And also I already installed another 
equal instance here. So that's also you can even be connect here from here. How? It's the same way. Just change the anyway, it's two. Okay. All right. So it's connected, but no database here. Okay. So that's all. That's what I just want to show you how to install. So this is actually okay. Let's 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 remove this. Remove this and remove this. So this is the instance we install right now. This is the instance. And also, if you go to security logins, you're gonna see here SA and also SQL admin and SQL admin group is here. All right, that's all uh, for how to install SQL instance. And if you like my video, please don't forget to give a big thumbs up. And also, if you're new in my channel, uh, please subscribe my channel. And also, I'm going to show you some couple of other videos, which is in my channel. Uh, let's share my screen with you. Uh, I just want to show you like my other video. Okay, let's share my screen again. So in here, if you go to my channel, if you go to my channel, I will have a, I have a multiple videos. So here's a SQL server always on. There's a complete video. And also I have a SQL server always on, uh, a deleting and removing database, uh, database node in a SQL server. And also I have a video for uh, how to shrink transaction log. And also I have a video for SQL server maintenance, um, uh, maintenance plan. So if you want to learn more, you can watch those videos. You can watch those videos. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for watching.